guys, Michelle Marie Tolomi. It is the 15th of March, 2015, and it's been a while since I've did any kind of a broadcast with you. And you can bear with me as I try to set up the gear here. Um, as I said, it's, well, you were laying there the whole time. Why didn't you just still lay down there? And then, you know, I would have paid it, right? Anyway, so I um, wanted to, first of all, personally apologize to all of my fans who have had wondered where I've been for the last few weeks. Well, I haven't been anywhere except the soup kitchen in here. Uh, for those of you who are aware and have been listening to the yourlistin.com forward slash B-I-C-H-E-L-A, you have been hearing our morning radio vlogs from the Sip Kitchen, and that is what we have been doing. We've been focusing on radio instead of video. Not that we can't do video, too. It's just that we wanted to do radio instead. So, um, But today, of course, is uh, a Sunday, and tonight, of course, is Once Upon a Time Night. So we're going to talk briefly about uh, the show. And my cat's got problems with here still. There we go. Get all crept out of his ears. Got he's getting wax build up in his ears. Um one Um there you go. And um so, you know, yes, there is uh definitely gonna be some um a, a new program site. Um, for those of you who have been keeping up with the show, I'm, I'm not going to tell you anything that's going to be a spoiler. Those of you who have been not really watching it, probably will be. Sorry about the yawn. We'll probably be wondering what is going to be going on. So let me give you a quick recap as I understand it at pretty media time. Ursula, Melissa, Vint, and Mr. Gold have decided to do something that was. Stated also in another very f fact, Mr. Gold said a line that was actually taken from the guy from Rapunzel, which says, Why can't villains have happy endings? Well, you know what? That's a great question. Why can't villains have happy endings? Well, I'm not really suggesting that villains should all be happy, happy endings, but it seems to me that you guys. Play down thing. Come on, you were laying down the whole time. Come on, let's lay down on the table. If you want to lay on the table, okay. Um. Okay, so what was I gonna say? Oh, yes. By the way, I did pass the mammogram. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, so the mammogram went good. Okay. And, well, like I said, we were still waiting for some of the additional support cables and things that for the, um, the, uh, software hardware demo coming up. We got to get those things in before we can start the demo. Um, and, uh, if everything goes to going or to plan, hopefully by the end of March, uh, we will have our 64 HDD Commodore 64 demo. Um, but you know what? Uh, the biggest problem is, is we got two pieces coming from overseas. Uh, the first part is from China, and the second part is from Australia. Uh, the 64HG XE1541 custom made cable is coming from Australia. And of course, the, um, the standard category 5 cable that would be recommended that was 100 feet long. I think it's 37 meters, something like that. 37 meters is coming from uh, the United States and Colorado. Uh, that'll be here in a few days. And uh, along our matching balance, we thought we will be able to do a demonstration of the camera. Right, okay, so that's coming up. So don't cry, Hosanna. It's coming, it's coming. Back to you, bye. No one in particular. By the way, what about the waste report? The waste report is doing good. Actually, I'm surprised. I was I I, I took a waste report measurement this morning and I thought we were gonna lose um, progress and we didn't. That's good. You see, so you're still losing weight. I'm still holding my own. Yeah, definitely. And of course, now that you're back in the can, see, I drops. 
Your eyes are doing better again. Well, I just started thinking about a couple of these guys, so yeah, they seem to be doing better. Okay. And um, so we're not going to be able to do any fun stuff in April, but um, uh, as soon as the 64 HDD gear is up, we'll be doing some Commer 64 stuff. Now, I never really talked much about the Commer 64 stuff. Well, let me just start. i got to put some stuff on the table, Mr. Cat. Let me just show you some quickly some of the stuff I have um, from my past. Um, In this box here is a variety of Commodore stuff. Um, these are these are some of the original discs I have. Here's the original G Wiz Cargo Manual. I thought I lost this. I didn't, so I printed a homemade one from the internet. Which um, oh, I found the problem with the printer too. I'll get that in a second here. I'll put these back in the sleeves here. Yeah, see these original sleeves um, from the 80s. How am I going to get more of these from binders? I don't know. If I can find some, they'll be hard to find. Um, yes, by the way, these can hold CDs too. Absolutely. I think I'll hold CDs. Okay. Now, in here is the reprinted. Uh, there's so many pages of it down. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Um, fortunately enough, not too many. Just a few pages are upside down. So. At least it looks like it anyway. So, um, by the way, if one of the problem with the printer, why it was printing like you see, I'm going to explain that in a minute. Um. Then we have a lot of loose pages through software and software disks and um, all kinds of stuff. This is reprints of catalogs and things like that. So we have 64. This is just an empty folder. We can use the whole paper. These are the other two boxes of original disks um, from my computer days um and i'm gonna get more of these cases a couple of hoi discs in here um a couple of odds and ends got a head cleaner this is one box of discs and we have another box of discs over here we actually have more than this this is the some of the discs um we got the doodle drawing program it'll give me 20 color utility discs the world of mac a book yes um, Michelle's Easy Script data disks, and uh, so that's this one is in the application software folder. And then we have over here another box of disks. We have, uh, I think these are mostly blanks. I think these are mostly blanks too. Let's see. Uh, Geos 2.0, Geo Rate Utility, 1600 modem, third party Geos Utilities. Um, lots of blank disks. I told you I was more of a software person, I mean, an application person than a gamer. So you'll notice there's really few games in here. It's because I never really got into the game scene. Some people like get into the games right away. I never got into the games. Okay? I always was programming software instead of playing games. Not that I have anything against games, mind you. This is amazing. This is... <laughs> this is an original Time Life step-by-step -step guide to the Commodore 64 computer that I bought back in when I was in high school. And uh, this is uh, good. A nice pictures, uh, illustration, explain how you can do things with it and, and everything. Uh, this is actually very good cheap for its age. Uh, I lost a few books since. Um, then I lost my machine language book and everything else. Um, so I'm going to still learn how to do it. Um, 
Well, let me see. I also just have a color of like 22 as well. I accidentally threw that away. Uh, but so let me show you what I got here. Computer's Guide to the Vic. Computer's Guide to the Vic 2. And we have, let's see. Programming Reference Guide for the Vic 20. Programmer's Reference Guide for the Commodore 64. And yeah, we have a third compute programming guide for the Vic right here. Uh, you can see that the Compute Magazine had changed to buy their design on it. So I have all three books of the, for the Vic 20. And unfortunately, they did not make a book series like this for the Commodore 64. Okay, they have a book, they have book series, but it's not the same one. Uh, what's cool about this book here is inside is programs and games and things like that you can do. Okay, and what else we got? We got the Commodore Assembler Manual. Like, oh, yes, by the way, make sure you keep your books with them again. Don't throw away your instruction manuals. Well, you might be able to get reprints on the internet. There's nothing that beats having a paper copy manual right in your hand. Little pods. You can always go back to it and flip through it and read your notes and things like that. It's a great way to go. And um, so, um, what else we got? We got more Commerce 64 stuff. I got a lot. No, not much more though. No, no. Um, pretty much. The rest of it is just a few odds and ends books here. Again, I got a few more compute books here. Um, we have Introduction to Basic 1. This is for the Commodore Big 20. Um, and that... No, this is the Commodore 64 version. This is the Commodore Big 20 version. This is part 2. <laughs> this is beat up. This is really beat up. Yeah. Okay. And this comes with programs and data set tapes you can read and play. Um, as I said, um, this is, um, as long as there's too much poke and peeks, this is as good as a tutorial as you're going to get. Uh, I could have really hard to find the introduction to basic part one for some reason, um, two in, uh, for the current 64 or the 20 for some reason. The, um, everything else is real snap to find. That stuff is just not it. Um, I have more books than this. Um, first of all, this is for, this is pretty advanced. This is a data file handler book. Um, this is represents how to use relative files, user files, sequential files, and program files for the Commodore 64. Originally it's 10 to 4, but it actually can be adapted to uh, some of the 20 as well. Um... It says a powerful database manager with a great speed. Computers are perfect tools for keeping records. There is no need for file cabinets, file folders, and all the paper that goes with them. Businesses have long recognized the advantage of electronic data management. Now you can record and manipulate any information on the Commodore 64 or PET. Computes file handler for the Commodore 64 contains a series of integrated programs that create a sophisticated file handling system. The data file handler is clearly explained and easy to use. Now, this is going to be a really hard book to find if you ever find this book. It's great if you want to learn how to do database. Um, let's see what else I got here. Oh, yes. Mapping the Vic 20 book. Mapping the Vic goes through and explains all the memory management and stuff like that. I actually have a 64 version here somewhere too. I think it's the next book in the series. Oh, by the way, yes. I should say this. Look, 20 Programmer's Reference Guide. Okay, it's missing the top page, but it's complete otherwise. It's second hand, so what do you expect? Yes, I do. Mapping the Commodore 64 and 64C. So, yes, great to know if you ever want to port any programs from the Big 20 over to the Commodore 64, you might need to find the associated similar reference points. This is the book to use for that. Um, then we have telecommuting on the Commodore 64, which explains the process of how to use the Commodore 64 for uh, dialing up services like CompuServe, 
genie and the source and Delphi, if you want to use it for that purpose. In bulletin words as well. Then we have my original, and yes, I remember this very fondly. I used to sleep with this book, literally, as I would read it every night before I go to bed. This is the Commerce 64 Programmer's Reference Guide. And um, it goes through, oh, just like the VIC-21, this goes into detail on the 64. It also includes, uh, in the back here, a big schematic of the machine. And if you're lucky enough to find one that has the original schematic, I bought this book brand new many years ago. This has got the entire schematic of the Commodore 64 and explains how the power supply is built and operated as well. So if you want to learn how to do things with the Commodore 64, this book is a great start um, from official sources, which is produced by the Howard Sam's company. Um, and um, it'll be a great way to get started with your computer era. That's, it's funny that I pull up a computer that's 25 plus 30 years old and um, and it's really kind of fun to see what we do. So what we're gonna do for the demo is we're going to set up our demo for Geos, not, and we're not gonna do Geos, although maybe I might touch on it, okay? Uh, the problem with Geos, by the way, for those of you who ever didn't know this, Geos is, that was just a plain, beautiful idea and concept in said reality. Geos is a very large program. It takes a lot of resources to do, and it's not really going to excite a lot of people. Here is, oh, you want to show them some of your stuff? Yeah, okay. Uh, this is a Commodore 64 memory map. This is from the internet now. Okay, it's a Commodore 64 memory map here. The Commodore 1541 user's guide. My original book disappeared years ago. This is the book in a printed form. This is the Welcome to Project 64. This is the Apex Fast Load Cartridge um, reference manual of what it does, how it uses it, what, and shows how to use the monitor and the debugger functions on it. Then we have over here um, a sales flyer from. Uh, what's coming is this one? I don't really remember. I think this is by Trade from Computer Systems Support. It's not going to open the name. I think this is some sensible software. I don't know. Um, it doesn't say. Um, yeah, www.4js.com. I got to see if these still exist. I haven't been on there in a long time. Then we have Sensible Software, Salesware. So if you ever want to get stuff for the M64, this is also known as oldsoftware.com. Um, we have the uh, fast list. This has nothing to do with Lin uh, Mac. I don't even or comment. I don't even know why this is in here. This is for uh, MS DOS um, stuff. I don't know how they got mixed in with, with the Commodore 64 stuff. Um, fast list. This is actually no list compiler uh, for um, the PC, so that's probably just in the wrong place. Um, I think I just kind of threw everything together. This is definitely not, I'm not in the right place. AT command set for the Nokia CDM, pro CDMA products. If you ever want to learn how to crack and hack an old CDMA Nokia phone, this is the book for you. I just don't know it's in there either. Maybe what we should do is make some of these available. I did originally. Okay. This is the fast list. Ignore the fast list. This is the first few pages of it. Um, this is the modem registers uh, for a standard um, Nokia modem again. CDMA, if you want to ask questions. I think this is associated with this other CDMA modem. And I made a cat sitting on my stuff. So. Um, so that's some of the stuff that we have here. I've got more, and I'm going to be um, working on the demonstrations, as I said, for the uh, products. And I also wanted to um, let you know that um, this is really being a real trip to go back and, and re-explore the early, my, my, my high school years uh, history with you. And, 
And by the way, Nick Copeland is interested in seeing how the review goes as well. So I'm going to be doing my best to work on making it a little more than just a quick, simple show you the cable, show you the software, show you the Apple, show you the loading. I want to go into detail and explain how it works and um, in doing variety of demos. As far as some of the other things that we found here, I don't know what's on this disc. It's just sitting in there. Probably like everything else, it's probably got a little bit of everything in it. Probably does. This is another thing from oldsoftware.com. Yeah, I get confused just as much as you do between all these sales flares. So, um... Yeah, why don't we go out to have a nice informal gathering? Informal gathering? Yeah. Okay. Any particular topic? Well, I was just thinking is, is, okay, you printed all these manuals, okay, for all these different products. How come you don't use them? I mean, you, because like a lot of Aspies, um, I tend to like to have a large variety of documentations from all kinds of applications. And I enjoy my library. And, uh, you know what you remind me of? Remind me of? Oh, Bell. Oh, Bell. Rumble still skins. Yeah, you know, me and Bell have a lot in common as far as the character goes. Um, she's also very much into periodicals. Uh, she, yeah, you're right. Kind of like Bell. Um, in the sense that, you know, the, the historical sake of keeping all the stuff around is important to me. Um, now, um, so I'm going to put this disc somewhere at least for the time being so it doesn't get damaged, okay? So this way, I, mean, I know it's not really associated with these discs, but I'm going to put it in here just because um, the way I want to protect it from getting trashed. Um, now, we found out uh, some related notes, okay, of what was going on with the printing. And I can show you what I'm talking about on this page right here. May it be hard for you to see it? I mean not. Okay. Now, you will notice that the page is kind of go on this side here, it looks great. And on this side, it looks like it's kind of like a, like it's got a five o'clock shadow on the paper. Well, the reason is, it's because the, the, the toner cartridge I refilled has a problem um, with spreading evenly the toner on the page. So apparently it had developed a toner problem um, near the end of its life. And because it's so full, I put, we fill it with new toner, I'm not gonna dump all that toner into another cartridge. It'll just make a mess. So we're just gonna use it up. And uh, right now it's still quite readable. So, um, and actually it's always good to have an extra page. Yeah, it's always good to have an extra page. Um, and so here we have this manual from Cartco Supra. So goes through and explains how you set the um, system. And we're going to be doing so much more stuff for the computer than this. This is just some of the stuff that we're doing. Now, some of you might ask the next question. Michelle, what can you do with a Commodore 64 that's 30 years old that you can't do with a modern PC today? Well, first of all, the modern PC today is unfortunately it's clearly in a lot of ways has made the Commodore 64 pale in comparison of what it could do with the Commodore 64 for its time was mind-blowingly awesome it still is got a lot of followers who look at it and say it's still mind-blowingly awesome sure it's 30 years old give or take and you know it's not really gonna um you know, really excite everybody and and everything. But the truth is, the Commodore 64 um, was my first computer I had 
that I actually used for a long time after I got it after I had Atomic Sinclair 1000. I got in my freshman year in high in, in uh, seventh grade. Um, so this thing was a is a eighth grade. So the Atomic Sinclair 1000 really never got much use. Okay, I mean it got some, but uh, the minimalistic basic kind of thing is basically. Uh, drove me nuts. The fact that you couldn't have, you couldn't read or date anything, and you would have to poke like crazy because there was no um, option to uh, manually have the, um, read and data statements. The minimalist basic of the Time of Sinclair 1000 made the Time of Sinclair 1000 a friggin' nightmare. Um, when I got the Commodore 64, I was um, it was my sophomore year in high school. I had, um, um, I wanted a computer that I could use to school that was inexpensive. And I had a summer job in my freshman year, and I had uh, saved up my money to buy a computer. And so I went to Consumers, and there was a Commodore 64, because my mom used to get a Consumers catalog. And there was the Commodore 64, and it was being offered for like 200 something dollars. I went ahead, and I took my money from my summer job, and I bought that machine, along with a third-party data set made by General Electric. Uh, I never got the data set to work quite properly on the Commodore 64. It worked wonderful on uh, my Tandy Model 102, until uh, recently when it failed, um, maybe about two years ago, two or three years ago. Um, but that was uh, that was a really sad day for me, uh, becoming the fact is that for uh, my uh, applications that this, uh, that third party general logic data set was actually kind of cool. Um, by its default, it came with interface module for a Commodore 64 and Atari. Um, and also, as I said, well, the interface box was really just a standard. Um, tape recorder you could use it to record audio as well as uh, computer programs so in that case it was great because you got a chance to do a variety of things um, with it I didn't get my first disk drive until my uh, I believe my junior year in high school I got my fifth I got my 1541 which is the one I still have and uh, and it still works like a champ believe it or not um, because I did not load a lot of mach um, of uh, protected software on it I did not have any problems with my heads getting out of alignment. I've actually had my, line, my heads checked, and they are still in alignment. Thank you very much. Very much so perfectly in alignment uh, even now. So it was a great thing for me to have been a, uh, blessed by the things that I have received. And, oh, yes, by the way, I wanted to let you know, speaking of things needing fixing and things that have been going good since, my landlord is going to be fixing the porch up um, in a couple weeks. He's going to have a new crew come in and replace uh, the porch. I don't know if it's going to be a patch and play or an outright replace. I can't tell you yet. It might be a problem if it's an outright replace because uh, that's going to probably take a lot longer. And, of course, that is our emergency exit. So, technically, uh, he would have to work very quickly within order to meet <coughs> Um, the town code compliance, uh, and he can't hold off on that much longer because the porch, the wood is really rotting, really bad on the bottom. The uh, so he is going to be replacing that porch. Okay, one way or another, either patch him or replacing, um, replace in place, um, <coughs> piece by piece, or he's going to replace it all at once, depending on how his architect designs it. Um, in addition to that, I want to first of all thank you very much um, for those of you who want like for a place to live and would like to be a part of the North American Snow Queen Palace. We have an apartment available for you. And the rent is about uh, seven hundred dollars a month plus one month security deposit. And it's apartment number seven is right next to me. If you're interested in renting that apartment, you can contact my landlord at area code eight six zero two four eight nine six four four. Uh, his name is Jimmy, and um, again, you got um, he provides you with the heat, the hot water, and the Wi-Fi, and the um, UP for the electric, and the um, there is in-house telephone is available. Um, although right now that that apartment does not have a phone line jack right for in-house. If you want to use a standard uh, 
outhouse phone service such as AT&T or Frontier, that's not a problem. There is an outhouse jack in the kitchen, so you can use a regular standard um, telephone service from a third party. Of course, you can use Vonage with the Wi-Fi, but just be aware that it is a shared Wi-Fi connection and it may not always be consistent. Um, again, if you're interested in the CD department and or would like to definitely uh, rent it, you need to contact Jimmy at the number at area code 860-248-9644. The cooking is electric. It's got two ro- um, three rooms, the kitchen, and a two rooms that can be used as two bedrooms or a bedroom and a living room or um, whatever you want to use it as. It does have a full-size tub. And uh, a bathroom, however, is not handicapped accessible. So if you are in a wheelchair, um, this would not be a good candidate for you. But if you are not in a wheelchair or if you just, frankly, just want to live in an old place or live near the North American Snow Queen, because I have apartment number nine right next door, no problem. Okay? So again, call Jimmy at area code 860-248-9644. $700 a month plus one month security to move in. And um, it is available right now. That is how I wrote did this video, which is on the 15th of March. So, come check it out. Well, guys, I think for the time being, until we get the rest of the stuff that we need, we're not going to be able to do much more demo with the Commodore 64 until then. And so we're not going to be doing too many videos until that time because... Um, I really don't have any ideas or topics, but if you do, if you have any ideas or topics, um, please do post them in the comment section below here. We can use all kinds of ideas, like what kind of things interest you and uh, things like that. And uh, let me know. We'll read them. If you want to send me a message privately, it's bsnboy, I-C-H-E-L-A-3 at gmail.com. If you want to send me an email, it's b-i-c-h-e-l-a-3 at gmail.com gmail.com and paypal donations can be sent to b-i-c-h-e-l-a-3 at gmail.com and b-i-c-h-e-l-a at yahoo.com okay don't forget to like or dislike share with your friends and enemies and like i said subscribe if you have not already done so and we'll try to come up with some new videos and anything you give a suggestion we'll look into we'll read them me and Lumi will look at them both, and uh, we'll determine where it goes. 